Michael. Um, it is our first webinar of the year and we are hoping that this one is a turning point in our ability to communicate and see each other uh, post COVID-19 uh, era. So thank you for joining and hopefully we'll have a good time in the next hour or so. Uh, I'll leave time for qu questions and answers at the end. Um, so the professional line of Andy Med, most of you are familiar with. Uh, Andy Med professional line of the pro and pure standalone or I'm sorry, I have noises in the background that I hear. It interferes with my ability to deliver the lecture. Can you please mute all microphones? Thank you. So the professional line by Andy Med uh, is a modular, it's RF-based modular plug and play multi-application platforms for non-invasive and minimally invasive indications suitable for all skin types. Both systems operated at one megahertz with embedded patent granted 3D technology. These platforms have abundant number of hand pieces which can be divided in two major families, subgroups. One is the tightening and contouring, what we call TC, and the other one is the fractional. TC includes the small, the I-fine, the shaper, the contour, and the mini shaper, where the fractional includes the intensive and the FSR. You don't have a problem. People, people talking with me, I, can, I, I cannot deliver the, the lecture. I need silence, please. Thank you. So, the three deep technology, uh, this is one of the purposes we came today is to a little bit to elaborate, to explore a little bit further with 3 deep technology. So the 3 deep technology is a multi-source phase controlled RF technology developed by Andymed. The 3 deep technology utilizes six phase controlled RF generators. Six generators controls the polarity of the RF, enables the manipulation of RF current energy penetrates deeper into the skin with low energy density on the epidermis. And we'll touch more in depth on the three deep later on the presentation. So all few devices and their respected hand pieces modules are configured, designed at a different spot size. Electrode orientation, linear versus round electrode size and gap distance that eventually determine the extent of heat generated and position into the different skin layers to be epidermis and FSR. So we can see here, uh, in this figure, the comparison of the size of the hand pieces, um, spot size, or footprint, uh, and you can see from left, small footprints up to the right upper. The contour Joseph, with, okay. Joseph, Joseph, can you hear me? Yes. There is someone that is... Okay, jo Joseph, it's look like that it's uh, silent right now. You can continue. 
but you you are on mute now okay can you hear me yes sorry for that uh, it was difficult for me to to convey the the message while i was interrupted so anyway the the figure here uh relates the relationship between each handpiece and its footprint size. You can see from the small to a large scale on the X axis, you see the eye fine and then the small and the mini shaper shaper and the contour. Each one has, has its own spot size configuration. Uh, and in, in relation to, sorry. And of course, each each one, each one of the these they, uh, hand pieces. We still have some background issues. Uh, well, where each one of the hand pieces uh, has its own ability to penetrate depth of penetration is different based on the on the size of the of um, the hand the hand piece that you you see. So this is the versatility of these hand pieces allows us to go and treat various layers of the skin, uh, a different part of the bodies and the face, of course. Uh, with relation to the power, each one also represents a different power ability or different power potential for, for the treatment going from the small to the contour. Uh, you can see that the eye fine operates in the range which is small power between three and five, while the contour can go up to 85 watts. Uh, these unique characteristics allows us again to introduce uh, the most safest um, you know, radio frequency um, energy into 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 different uh, layers of the skin. Well, what about the electrode geometry? The geometry of the electrodes has a major impact on the impedance, the resistance value that each one of the hand pieces sees for each treatment. There is a nonlinear inversal relations between the con the contact area of the electrodes with the skin and the measured imp impedance. For bigger contact area, the impedance will be smaller and vice versa. So th this is important consideration also to understand what the handpieces you know, represent with respect to their skin interaction. Well, these handpieces can do a host of many treatments, which most of you are aware of, on the face, there are lots of indications on the periorbital right tides, lower cheek jawline laxity, nasolabial folds, marionette lines, lower lid tightening, etc., and trophic scars, cheek laxity, and, and so forth. Whereas on the body, we have abundant indication as well using the larger hand pieces spot size, as you've seen. Yes, lot, deeper, deeper penetration into the skin layers, uh, treating stretch marks, cell light, and uh, other. Uh, imperfections of, of the skin, uh, the deeper skin layers. Well, before, um, you know, uh, summer up this small introduction about the three deep, we need to appreciate that the Antimed Pro safety yes, features yes, yes. Is, is, another, <laughs> is another major um, value that you have uh, on, our, on our platforms. It has motion sensor, which is pulse emitting only if the handpiece is in motion. We have a tissue contact sensor, pulse is emitted only if the handpiece is full contact with the skin. And we have a real time impedance measured that measure the fine tuned treatments parameters according to the skin properties. So that was a you know, kind of introductory to the, I would say to the uh, three deep, uh, the pro line and the uh, pure, their characteristics in general. But we came here also to understand a little bit more about what is radio frequency before we embark into de de um, deeper details on our three deep technologies. So the RF is the oscillation rate of an alternating ele electrical current or voltage uh, or a magnetic el electrical and electromagnetic fields or mechanical system in the frequency between 300 kilohertz and 300 gigahertz. RF frequencies propagates in the tissue in the form of electrical current between applied electrodes in the form of radiation at higher frequencies. Frequencies in the range of 200 to kilohertz to six megahertz are the most common in medicine 
but there are devices with frequency up to 40 megahertz in the, in the aesthetic market. Uh, so here, here we go. Uh, the electromagnetic waves are composed of both electrical and magnetic components. Um, and the frequency of electrical currents characterize how many times per second electrical currents changes its direction and it's recorded in Hertz. For example, one megahertz, it's 1 million times cycles per second. And, uh, and of course, higher, there are higher rates of uh, frequencies in radio frequency applicators in, in aesthetics, like one hertz, two hertz, three hertz, six hertz, and even 40 megahertz. Well, we need to appreciate the fact that the radio frequency is part of the electromagnetic spectrum. It has specifically invisible waves that can be introduced to many applications in daily life. Among them, of course, is in medicine. And it was first introduced uh, in the beginning of the last century in medicine, in, sur in surgery. And then it was proliferated in the, in, in, in the 2000th era of uh, aesthetic medicine, 2004, introduced by a com company by name uh, Thermage from the US introducing the first applicator for aesthetic application. And, and th this has opened a new era for radio frequency uh, as a very meaningful tool in our industry. So the radio frequency intended use is in medicine, uh, electrocoagulation and hemostasis of blood vessels. And in aesthetic, we have it applied in non-invasive for skin tightening and skin rejuvenation. And for minimally invasive, just recently introducing the fractional microneedling for coagulation and ablation. So there is a progression of radio frequency proliferation and, and uh, innovation in the field of aesthetic. And this is something in Endymed we are happy and proud to, to be in the front line. Uh, so what is radio frequency? Radio frequency is a non-ablative method that produces resistance within the various layers of the skin. The tissue's resistance causes electrical current with transformed to thermal energy. Heat is, heat is translated, is generated, I'm sorry, is generated from the resistance of the tissue components of the movement of charged and polar molecules within the oscillating RF fields. This resistance termed impedance generates heat relative to the amount of current in time covering the electrical current and thermal energy. Factors such as size and depth of the tissue and its various layers, dermis, muscle, fat, and fiber, fibrous tissue must be considered as they impose different degrees of impedance of the RF energy. Um, so th this is something you need to, uh, to appreciate. Uh, electrical, electrical conductivity for biological tissue is a major factor that we are able to translate the electricity, transform the electricity into heat. We're doing it by translational motion of charged particles of ions such as sodium, potassium, chloride, or by using the abundant uh, existence of water in, in, the, in the body. But these two mechanisms are different and obey different frequencies of different applications. Uh, in, in the first one, translational motion is being created with lower frequencies between one and six megahertz, whereas uh, indirect motion with the polar or with the molecules, water molecules, are being used with higher frequencies of uh, radio frequency. Uh, the resistance is generated in relative amount of current and time by converting electric currents to thermal energy. Thermal energy is dispersed of three-dimensional volume tissue at control depth. These are the methods typically we see in radio frequency delivery. Uh, the capacitive coupling, which is a non-roving, which is monopolar type, which we all know uh, of kind of thermage. And we have the resistive coupling, which needs the, the in-motion roving, uh, such as bipolar, uni unipolar, and three depth by Andymed. Uh, we need to appreciate the fact that our, our devices have different frequencies. And one of them, of course, is the Andymed 3 dip at one megahertz. There are, there are, here, we need to appreciate the fact that there are 
medium waves on the left and their short waves on the right. As we approach, um, um, as we approach higher frequencies, such as to the right, on the, on the 40 megahertz, penetration is lower when compared to one megahertz. So in that regard, NDMED 3D technology is quite amenable for deep penetration into the skin. Uh, as we all know, RF is a non-invasive method that produces resistance within the various level, the tissue. The tissue resistance causes the electrical current which transform into the thermal energy. So we need to appreciate the different layers of the skin by their depth, going from the epidermis to the papillary dermis, etc. And each one of them has different resistance characteristics. The epidermis with high resistance, the, the, the papillary dermis with moderate resistance, and the mid-dermis to lower dermis with lower resistance, and the fat cells, the hypodermis with high degree of resistance. These all obeys the energy delivery of Ohm's law that we all need to appreciate, which is characteristic of the energy delivered to the tissue uh, that is in, in direct relations to the current imposed to the uh, impedance that exists for, for, the, for, this, uh, for the energy to be transformed through the, through the tissue and the time of exposure. Uh, the law demonstrates that the energy delivered is directly proportional to the product of the impedance, current, and time. Thus, if impedance decreases, the current must increase to maintain the same delivery of energy. Conversely, if the impedance increases, the current must decrease for the same reason. Tissues have resistance against the electrical currents, and this resistance creates heat. Therefore, the RF penetration depth is calculated by tissue impedance and RF frequency. Um, so this Ohm's law must be, of course, being appreciated when we're talking about different approach of treatments of radiofrequency applicators. In that regards, the resistance of tissue is quite high, as I mentioned, in the fat, which is 2,000, about 2,000 ohms with respect to the lowest one, uh, or the heart tissue, which is only 32 ohms, or the skin, only 289 ohms. The differences are difference in the impedance of resistance of each, each tissue will govern the ability to treat or to uh, increase the heat inside each of those respected layers of the skin. So uh, current flow, when we talk about currents, we are using currents in order to, of course, to change powers, etc. These are all translated eventually to the heating depends on the current flow. The higher the current, the, cur the greater the heating effect. The smaller the area, the greater the heating effect. And the higher the tissue resistance, the greater the heating effect. These are all being, of course, translated into different approaches and, and different settings when relations to our 3D technology and the different handpieces. So there are lots of you know, possibility or fishes, I would say, uh, out there and which one of those RF technologies to fish out, that's the, that's the uh, major issue when we come up to find something that is unique. And in the next, in the next slides, we'll try to see what makes 3D technology different than the rest and what are their advantages of 3D technology. So we have those monopolar, bipolar, multipolar, uh, expolar, and on the right, the 3D technology all has their own configuration and mechanism of action, uh, the technology that they have possessed, and, and, and they're quite unique. When, when we talk about the monopolar, the first technology to, to introduce to the aesthetic market, the sing, the, it's a single RF generator, controls one electrode only, the penetration is deep since there is a flow of energy through the body toward the ground pad, the energy delivered results in a higher temperature near the electrode, which requires intense epidermal cooling, uncontrolled energy spreading toward the ground, the ground pad. And it may be painful since high power is required to push the RF from the single electrodes into the skin. So this is, this is a, a complex type of approach uh, to, tr to treat uh, and it's uh, 
time consuming as well for both patients and the operator. What about bipolar? Bipolar also, it's quite simple. It's single RF generator controls two electrodes only. There is only superficial penetrations since there is energy flow along the shortest path between two electrodes. It requires active cooling of the electrodes to prevent uh, epidermal burn. The tri or the multiple multipolar technology, it's a single rider frequency generator, again, with control three to eight different electrodes. There is only superficial penetration since the energy flows along the shortest path between the three, like fractionated and, and you know, like this, the bipolar, but no cooling is needed because the energy is split between two or more receiving electrodes and the power density is quite low. The three deep technology on the other hand, uh, targets the dermis skin layer delivering focused and controlled energy directed to the dermis to activate new collagen production. 3D technology delivers energy into the skin with a, main, with a maintained dermis temperature of 52 degrees centigrade, while the temperature of the epidermis remains at 40 degrees. The 3D treatments are pleasant and comfortable with no side effects or downtime. So the three deep technology to sum it up, utilize three paired six phase control RF generator. Since the adjacent electrodes that you see, those on green and those are on red, uh, possess an identical polarity, no current is created between these electrodes on the skin surface. The, stim the simultaneous multiple electrodes fields created by the multiple source repel or attract each other, leading to three-dimensional delivery of RF energy to the dermis and subdermal targets, minimizing the energy flow through the epidermis without the need to active cooling. The combination of the controlled phases of the three deep energy delivered to different electrodes and configuration of the electrodes allow concentrating the delivery energy in a specific region below the skin surface up at a particular high efficacy. So the three deep technology is unique in its ability to, I would say, uh, focus or by, uh, bypass the, the limitation of the bipolar technology in making the communication of the energy delivered simultaneously by these uh, six generator that being operated individually to have a better penetration inside vertical penetration of the energy into the skin. So here it's a good example showing the, the comparison between the bipolar on the left, which is quite superficial flow uh, up to 1.5 millimeter only versus the 3D technology. You can see vertical flow into the skin layer up to six millimeter. What about the applicators uh, of, or the use of those applicators in the daily life? We're all familiar with the TC facial protocols and other protocols we have delivered throughout the years to you. These are not new, but we're gonna give some attention to them. Basically the TC facial protocol, as well as the body comprise of pre-treatment, pre-heating and therapeutic phase and a number of treatments. Uh, typically, uh, pre-therapeutic phase controls can, can be done two to three passes to bring up the temperature from baseline from 36 degrees or so to up to 40 degrees and then therapeutic up to 42, 43 degrees to six to eight passes. Total number of uh, sessions typically between six and eight. Uh, we have the iFine handpiece for the face treatments in delicate areas such as periorbital and perioral. And we have the small for facial treatments uh, on the cheeks and the neck and the submental and the decolletage. And these are some of the example of before and after with the small. Um, and we have also the mini shaper for other off face um, line as well, such as the arms and the knee, uh, but we can use them of course on the jawline as the mental. And these are some of the before and afters that some of you are already know. Uh, nice resolution improvement in the arms. Uh, the body, as mentioned, might require, since it's a more larger volume of, of, of uh, skin being treated, we need to have more passes 
uh, in most areas of larger areas, such as the buttocks, such as the thigh and the abdomen and, and so forth. We, we have some differences also, the number of uh, treatments requires eight to 10 treatments altogether. So we have the shaper for the abdomen, flanks, the buttocks and the thighs. Each, each areas, these areas should be individually being treated with the aesthetic unit of 14 by 14 centimeters to increase the, to increase the temperature uh, and you know, make some changes for neocollagenesis, et cetera. These are some of the examples uh, of body tightening you know, with, the, with the shaper. Uh, and we have the well-known contour hand pieces, which I didn't mention in the, in the beginning, but it exists only on the pro line, uh, uh, on the endometrial pro uh, rather than on the pure, which doesn't have that hand piece. So it, uh, it, um, it has the ability to, to treat very deep into the skin uh, up to 26 millimeter altogether uh, with the suction, with the vacuum, uh, allowing um, treating the abdomen, the flanks, the buttocks, and the thighs. Uh, and you can see here the, uh, the, the signature, the, the thermal signature of this handpiece is quite impressive uh, and can, can be, be manipulated for deeper heat penetration to the subcutaneous layer which increased the blood supply and circulation in the subatmospheric pressure created the vacuum and activate the lymphatic system. So uh, this is a very nice, elegant type of controlled, self-controlled handpiece for body contouring, which has been, uh, I would say, our flagship for body contouring handpiece in our systems. Uh, mentioning the, uh, the shaper and the contour, we, we all see, we, we tend to see uh, kind of a monotherapy type of approach for each hand, for, for each indication. But of course, we can have those hand pieces being combined to have a paired or bundled uh, protocols for, for, for different <coughs> types of hand pieces, such as contour and shaper. This is an example of using the contour for cell light, uh, uh, nice results, nice resolution that uh, only after uh, one treatment. And this is, this is also a very nice uh, resolution of treatment done on, on, with the shaper uh, on a 41 year old uh, female. You can see before and after very impressive reduction in the circumference. Um, so, so this is for the TC hand pieces. Uh, as mentioned earlier, this is the, the first group that of, of hand pieces we have. And of course we have the, the fractional hand pieces, the FSR and the intensive for indications such as wrinkles, acne scars, skin rejuvenation, stretch marks, neck lifting and delayed pores. And these, these hand pieces are typically uh, require certain amount of pulses per treatment area. Typically on the face, we're talking about, about 200 pulses uh, and the number of treatments done are three uh, spaced every month or so. So in order to appreciate the fractional hand pieces that we have, we need to force to, to take a look at the non-ablative fractional lasers on the, on the left upper versus the ablative fractional lasers um, and bipolar fractional radio frequency on the lower left and uh, the FSR of Andimed. So these, all these have different skin interactions and the way they are being affect the skin eventually. And this is something that we, we need to appreciate. Whereas in the non-ablative fractional lasers, we can sometimes penetrate deep into the skin, to the dermis uh, and, and, and create some microthermal zones, similar to ablative fractional with the CO2, et cetera. And in the FSR, the FSR is a combination, I would say, of unique electrical microablation and secondary thermal effect, which we will see in just a moment. So the FSR is for peels, partial parts of the tissue, keeps the healthy tissue around the ablative areas with short down times and the ablative surface simulate collagen or new, new collagen uh, regeneration. It has 112 pins that align on 14 columns by, by eight rows. And each one of the electrodes is 300 microns in diameter. So these are very little tiny electrodes 
can create very high power density and their ability to create those micro zones or ablation, increase the temperature to 100 degrees centigrade and uh, ablate those uh, upper epidermis skin layers. It has up to 400 pulses uh, to be used in a single used uh, uh, tip. So it, it has a scanning method. It, it, each sub pulse has, uh, can get one polarity and five other uh, no opposite polarity. So the FSO, actually the FSO works in a scanning method like, uh, and it has the ablation. And as I mentioned, the thermal effect, and you can see here, this is the way it works. The 100, since the adjacent electrodes possess an identical polarity, no current is increased between these electrodes on the skin surface. The multiple electronic, el electrical fields that are created repel each other and driving the energy deeper into the skin. So you can see here uh, the alignment of those 14, 14 uh, homes of, of uh, micro electrodes that we, we see and and we start in those communication on the skin start with the first phase of those four phases. So the pulse here is quite long for about one second, scanning the entire, the entire spot size, of the footprint of the FSR. So it starts with the first line of electrodes transmitting the energy and then go forward uh, and since no adjacent electrodes can communicate between each other, they're bypassing, bypassing each other and create, uh, create those inner depth penetration to the skin layer and so forth. So it propagates in addition to the second phase of the pulse further and then creates the third, third pulse and the fourth pulse to cover the entire full, full scanning method on the entire footprint. So this, this is a superficial type of injury that we can see in histological, um, in histology, showing microablation um, of holes that are being created by each one of the, those, those um, electrodes. It's, a, it's, a, and it's not a bladed thermal effect seen being deposited down into beneath the epidermis layer. Uh, and these are some examples of uh, before and, and three days, six days, two weeks uh, after the FSR treatments, one can see uh, that uh, even in the higher settings uh, of five, five watts and 60 milliseconds, skin is healed quite tremendously uh, after 14 days. Uh, and these are comparison of the FSR versus the bipolar showing on, on the left, on the upper, uh, row, we see the FSR, uh, and on the lower, we see the competition of the bipolar uh, microablative technology, and we can see deeper penetration of footprints, of thermal footprints, a signature uh, after 10 seconds, which is quite significant for the FSR when compared to, to the bipolar. These are some examples of the F FSR before and afters. Uh, you know, nice resolution after four months of two treatments only and some of the decoltage, uh, three months of the one only single FSR treatments. What about the Endimed Intensive? Uh, Endimed Intensive is uh, 25 mic microneedling five by five matrix um, incorporating uh, non-insulated needles that has between 127 to 300 microns in diameter uh, it can penetrate up to five millimeter in, in depth and its effective treatment area is 10 by 10. Uh, it, it's operated by a smooth motor insertion. It has fractionated pulse mode technology embedded. So the, the technology here is in front of you. It has those you know, golden, golden coat, coated plate um, needles that, that make the treatment safe and uh, biocompatibility bio is, is being uh, tested with these needles. And it's, uh, as, as again, it, uh, it 
produce microinsertions, mechanical as well as thermal, th thermal effect in, uh, in the area of insertion. Um, this is an example of full field versus fractional field. We can see on the left, non-fractional footprints as shown with the, with the shaper handpiece. Uh, we see a large area of thermal, thermal effect. On the right hand side, we see the fractionated needles. Uh, the, the signature is uh, either spherical. You can see here the, the, uh, the non insulated is it's characterized by spherical footprint. That is, the thermal effect is surrounding the entire, entire um, electrodes. And the intensive we can just emphasize here it has, since it's a fractional, we need to translate it to fractional meaning, meaningful um, values in, in, in mechanical penetration. Uh, only the needles create uh, five by five, 25 holes. And from perspective of only mechanical density is about 3% only. But when we combine it with the thermal effect, you know, we can reach up to about 15% altogether of, uh, of density, which is quite safe. And this is why we see very little minimum downtime or complications uh, owing to the fractionated radio frequency. So it's, it's, it's nice to see that we have the ideal density required for microneedling densities uh, without any complication. Then can be translated in ability to do to introduce different energy densities with those microneedles uh, based on very uh, varying the power, the pulse width, and the needle's depth for the indications being used on, on patients. Of course, we, we didn't mention that, but I, hope, I, I uh, assume you know that, that radio frequency is color blinded and it might not interfere with skin type, dark skin types, but again, we need to, to consider that when we typically treat the uppermost surface of the skin and we should not have large densities of energy on darker skin types patients. Uh, intensive major indications are acne scars, white tides, wrinkles, skin laxity, rejuvenation, lower face and neck, uh, tightening and stretch marks to name but few. And it can be, and can be also used here with hair treatments protocols, such as with the small. So combination treatments are being advocated for both the FSR and the intensive that can have bilayer treatments uh, of the skin uh, to enhance results. These are some examples of combined treatments with the FSR and the intensive before and after um, that shows FSR, three FSR treatments and, and one, one intensive treatment. And here, similarly, nice, nice results before and after in combination of these two modalities. Um, and what about the intensive? As I mentioned, short downtime, here's a good presentation of before and a follow-up of patient skin immediately one day and two days and one week after you can see almost complete resolution uh, after one week. So the intensive is quite safe uh, in most cases, uh, but again, you need to be aware uh, on the settings um, you are integrated into, into the skin. So, Acne scars are a major, major um, indication with the intensive, very nice resolution, clinical resolution after three treatments only. And again, here for lower face, for neck lifting or contouring of the jawline, uh, very impressive results. Again, same area for jawline, some very nice results. These RF Endomed 3 deep intensive results were posted on the social media. It's from Dr. Rivera in Buenos Aires. Nice resolution for acne scars of these patients uh, with some, I would say, um, high, high power values for 20 watts uh, that can be done by good experienced doctors. 
uh, we look at the three de depth of penetrations level, two, two, 2.5 and three. Typically we are suggesting to do the first pass starting from the deep and then go uh, uh, to, to more superficial levels of penetration. If you do multiple, um, multiple treatments or passes on the patient's skin. Here again, these are the patient, this is the patient. This is a nice example of 62 years old woman who came to clinical, to Endomet clinical. We were able to um, treat her with the intensive uh, without any downtime or complications. She, as you can see, she did an incredibly nice job with respect to her, both sides of the cheeks uh, showing tremendous results both on the left and both on the right side. As, as you can see, th th these are very nice, mm, nice resolution. Among other things we do um, with our 3D technology is we're communicating with KOLs around the world and asking their experience in their use of the, of the uh, Andymed technology. We sent you some months ago, I think the, our, our doctor experience and to show some of them, um, here, uh, like Dr. Stefano Tocci, Lavit Ackerman, and other doctors, well-renowned doctors from South America, Dr. Ana Marcedo, Dr. Claudia Marcal, Marcel, Dr. Paula Kolpas, and, and Dr. Mayala Carbonell, and, and Dr. Gold, of course, and uh, Carvalho, Dr. Carvalho. These are doctors communicating with us. They're, they're I would say, out of the box, off protocols, treatments, that, and they were sharing with us. I'd like to share it with you now. Um, so it will take me a while or not a while, a minute to go and find and, and find the another another file to to bring up to you. Okay. Just a moment, please. Pronto. Pronto. Si. Okay. Uh, so moving si. along. So we have here the presentation. Cosa vuol dire io non lo non lo faccio? No, non ho detto questo. Allora, se non sei stato presente alla conversazione, mi raccomando, non dire solo di quello che non, non sai, perché non, non sono okay, so così. Ok, quindi questi sono i... Ma mi ha riferito che aveva questo malessere generale. Se qualcuno ha aperto il microfono, non posso... Ma il giorno dopo mi ha chiamato, e il giorno dopo mi ha chiamato, mi ha detto, sto molto meglio. E quindi mi ha detto che ha la febbre, quindi attenzione a quello che stiamo dicendo. E mi ha detto, dottore, sto molto meglio. E tu guarda, allora facciamo così, visto che stai molto meglio, vedi come va anche nel pomeriggio domani, se dovessi migliorare, mi fai sapere. Facciamo please, facciamo please, mute, please mute your microphone. Non che non lo facciamo. 
this smart salon. Please, can you please uh, mute your mic microphone? So moving along, uh, so these are the doctors, you know, the doctor experience that they convey to us, you know, and we, as I mentioned, we shared it with you guys uh, previously, Dr. Colado Marcal from, and Dr. Colpas from Brazil showing fat reduction protocol. I'm not gonna go in details on each one of them, but just to show you that they were able to come up with very incredible results, very impressive results. Fat reduction using the contour handpiece, power 85 watts, 20 cycles, five watt level of vacuum is five, reaching up to 40, 41 degrees centigrade and treating areas of 15 by 15. These are some of the results. And you can see with the quantificator analysis for photography system, uh, it was, she was able to reduce the volume by 113 on the ML uh, on the right thigh and on the left side, 117. Auxiliary hypergrosis is off protocol uh, indication for the intensive. We're using it quite extensively uh, throughout the world with some impressive results. Uh, Pre-treatment patients should avoid shaving the area, shave the treatment area through 24 hours before treatment. Uh, starch tests should be done with iodine test. Lidocaine and stevia should be applied. It's mandatory because it's quite painful. Number of sessions are three, uh, given every four to six weeks. And the needle's depth penetration should be maximum to five millimeter. Power should be no less than 20 and the pulse width up to 170 in order to have better conduct, conduction, thermal conduction. And we're using abundant numbers of shots, uh, two passes altogether on each side of the axilla. And these are some of the results before and after 60 days, we see nice clinical resolution uh, in the axillary area, as well as in this, this example of that lady. So the, this axillary epigrosis is a well-accepted modality that can be, can be done easily and it has good clinical results. Uh, another doctor from Brazil showing you know, her ability to maximize, I would say, uh, the melasma treatments with Andromed 3D technology by bringing her approach, holistic approach, I would say different types of melasmas. So this is quite complex, but I mean, you should have it. She has several approach to melasma with melanic and vascular components or, or melasma with already been treated with other methods and it's kind of resistance one. So, uh, and she has melasma with acne scars and melasma af and after breastfeeding, etc. So this is, this is kind of, you know, I would say lengthy type of um, protocols she's been uh, depicted here, but it, I'm, I'm encouraging you to see it and follow her advice in all of the four different subtypes of melasma treatments. Okay, uh, specifically looking at nice before and after photos, you can see nice resolution for the protocol number one and number two uh, and number three protocols and number four. Uh, of course, one of the things you need to to, to, to seek is good post care treatment for the face area since the uh, melasma is being mainly uh, being generated or being initiated by the sun. So you need to protect it from the sun. Uh, Mayala Garcia Carbon, another nice doctor from South America. Uh, stretch marks treatments. This is a big area, large area to come up with our um, technologies with the intensive to be combination kind of a drug delivery kind of uh, treatment or paradigma of using intensive uh, with FSR and intensive use bio uh, stimulator and injection. So she's bringing here her own school of approach using pre-care uh, before the treatments with some skin preparation uh, and, and then after care treatment that should be, uh, should be taken care of to, to to, to do to maximize those those uh, results. 
and she's bringing some nice, as you can see, after five sessions with the intensive in IPL and two sessions with drug delivery. Um, th this is a very remarkable, it's difficult to treat case and she, she did a remarkable good job. And look at her, try to follow her recommendations uh, in, in this presentation. Another one, uh, nice, this is the, the one with the, with the ALBA type of stretch mark. Uh, after five sessions, again, same, same approach of multidisciplinary or holistic approach of bringing or insertion of cosmeceuticals into the skin. Uh, Dr. Carvalho also, uh, you know, innovative in her approach in trying to see uh, new indications out of the box and off protocol for drug delivery, using it for alopecia uh, and for and, and drug delivery. She's using medications such as uh, minoxidil, biotin growth factors and fenestreed uh, and, and, other, and other medications. And afterwards, she is combining it with LED, light emitting diode uh, and doing the combination uh, in order to encourage the um, uh, the growth, the, the regrowth of the hair follicle. Dr. Stefano Tocci, uh, plastic surgeon from Italy, very nice um, approach to the very delicate, very complex area, such as the periorbital uh, for skin rejuvenation, uh, for rejuvenation of the periorbital area. Yeah, his approach is kind of advanced. It needs to know but the technology quite well. So you need to have quite experience or mileage with both the FSR and the intensive. And you can see just a combination of fractional method, the same, the same session, combining the FSR and the intensive. This is after three treatments uh, and very impressed clinical results on, on the region. Um, resolution or downtime is just about a week. And uh, of course, you need to have sun protection and sunglasses if you go out to, to the sun in case uh, you, you live in, uh, in hot area weather. Uh, we have Tani, uh, Dr. Tani from Pakistan showing some acne scars using PRP, which is another term to, to, for autologous PRP, take blood over your body and be injected in certain areas this is a very well-known approach in aesthetic medicine and procedural dermatology. If anybody has that ability, the intensive is an ideal uh, to be combined with PRP. Uh, so we do the treatments with parameters of 1.5 uh, millimeter in depth, 80 millisecond in pulse duration in 11 watts, and then do the, uh, uh, the FSR uh, treatments and inject, then inject the, the, I'm sorry, that was a conf confused with the previous one, uh, with Dr. Tochi. This is the going back to Talahai uh, approach in the uh, treatment of acne scars with the PRP. So intensive followed by PRP injection. <laughs> Same session with the PRP and uh, number of Number of sessions are three. Results are quite, quite impressive. As you can see from his before and after. Very nice. Uh, Dr. Atul Kadat uh, for post burn hyper, hypertrophic scars using the intensive TAC, which is chemical pill, and 5FU, which is a type of medication treated for hypertrophic scars. Look at the results of his uh, approach, multi application approach. Uh, nice resolution for this very hard to see and very hard to treat uh, case. Dr. Michael Gold, old friend of uh, Endymed for many years, showing topical regimen combined with intensive for proven of skin healing and aesthetic outcomes. So he was using here intensive with some cosmeceuticals uh, to be introduced into the skin. And if all the patients, they did a topical regimen at home and showed here baseline on the upper row, post-treatment skin reaction day 
day three post and then 90 days post treatments. And you can see nice resolution. He published it uh, about two years ago in one of the journals. You can see his publication. Dr. Lavit Ackerman, a medical, medical advisor for Andy here in Israel. We're collaborating with her for uh, some clinical studies and she did some nice attempt to show uh, some, some cell-like protocol with the intensive and the contour handpiece. These are some of her results that we were able to see after only one treatment. And also post-surgical abdominal plastic scars uh, and using the shaper and the intensive together. Uh, and these are some of the results, three sessions altogether spaced every four weeks. Um, and, and this is, this is uh, what, what I wanted to share with you with relation to, um, one second, the clinical. Um, let's see if I can bounce it back. Can you see it? Okay, so the clinical department encourage each one of you to, to, be, um, to be aware of the need to continue publishing clinical studies or clinical experience with your colleagues or KOLs in your region. So as you know, uh, Endomed has long tradition of good submission rates and acceptance of their work in the past years, and we are here at the clinical department, we would be more than happy to have you collaborating with us um, in, in order to expand our, our you know, recognition in, in the field of dermatology. And we are hoping to have some more news in relation with technology and some new applications that will expand our ability to do new studies with you guys. Uh, so clinical department today, uh, I'm happy to introduce uh, Mrs. Lee Friedman. Mrs. Friedman had joined um, Endymet about six months ago. She is a key player in the clinical department and please feel free to write her on any issues. I've joined Endymet about a year ago uh, after assuming uh, some 16 years at Alma Lasers in the field of, of course, in the energy-based devices. So I have quite large experience uh, and I'm happy to be here at Endymet supporting their needs and extend their ability to excel to a new level. I want at this stage to thank Amir Ganon, uh, my colleague here, and Mrs. Lee, Lior Balik, and again, Lee, for their excellent uh, coordination of this event. And hopefully we'll be able to see each other instead of through the Zoom or the screens in person in the near time soon. So I thank you for your attention and have a great week. Any questions that you might have? Uh, First, um, you have any can you hear me? Please feel free to ask or write or um, whichever is convenient to you, but identify yourself, please. Can you, can you hear me? Yes. I yes, Emil. Yeah, I cannot uh, see myself. So first, first of all, uh, <clears throat> I want to thank. Oh, first I introduce myself because some some of you know me and some of you not. So my name is Amir Ganon. I am the VP Sales of uh, Endymed. I want to thank you all for uh, taking the effort and participating for the patient. We have a very nice number of participants here, so really, really appreciate it. I want to thank Joseph for a brilliant lecture. It was a very interesting, it was interesting uh, lecture, and I'm sure uh, we will have um, we will have some questions from from the audience here. I see I see some I see some people that uh, that I may know. I see some people that uh, that from from many places in the world. So it's really it's really nice it's really nice to see that uh, that we have uh, people from Asia, people from Europe, people people from Indonesia, UK, France, Italy, uh, Singapore, 
<clears throat> China. Uh, I saw that we have that we have some uh, very famous colleagues from the UK, Roshin and Rebecca. I uh, saw so Paolo, Paolo, our, our sales agent, our sales agent for EMEA uh, from Italy, he's also with us. Uh, so we have a, a very diverse audience and, and we, will, we will be glad to hear um, uh, questions, questions from you guys. You can send the questions through the chat or you can, or you can introduce yourself. Um, and, and ask questions. So Lee, if you can, if you can remove the mute uh, from the people and let's start to have uh, questions and answer. Let's see, we have on the chat. Joseph, someone is, yes. is asking if they can have the protocols from the presentation today. Aruma Yant. Aruma Yant. Yes. Yeah, we can we can send those protocols. You, you just relay to us an email, and we'll be happy to send it as soon as possible. We have it. You know, it's possible. Anybody needs. Um, any protocols, please write to, to Lee or myself to the email. I write also my, my email. You can, you can add your email, Joseph. You can add your email address <clears throat> to the chat. Uh, Roshin, Roshin from the UK. Is asking what will be the main the main advantage uh, between the between the insulated and non insulated micro needling. Yeah, in just a moment. Okay. Okay. All right, I sent you guys the uh, emails. So the question was the difference between non-insulated and insulated. It's quite straightforward. Insulated needles are insulated throughout the lengths, except the edge, except the tip, which has a small opening that through which the energy is being transmitted. Okay. Uh, so that in opposed to the non-insulated, which the entire length of, the, of each needle is being radiating the energy. And this, is, this is the advantage of non-insulated when, when compared to the insulated needles that it, it can, it, it can um, create a larger thermal footprint, I would say, or signature inside a larger volume of tissue and it negates the need to do multiple passes. So th this is, this is uh, very important when you, you want to, to, to have faster and I would say more, more efficient way to, to uh, change the characteristic of, of, the, of the tissue. On the other hand, there is a room for, of course, the, the insulated needles in certain, in certain areas, certain conditions that we, we, we we might bring in the future, and maybe we'll bring in the future in order to introduce it in such cases, uh, such as going deeper into the skin without causing any adverse event uh, in larger, in, in, in larger, um, I would say, energy powers uh, that may, we, we might not be able to do with the non-insulated. But this is, this is more or less the differences between the insulated and non-insulated. The insulated also has radial, uh, radial, I would say, uh, thermal footprint, whereas the, the tip only of the insulated needle is very small. So you don't have a really a good, a good um, impact uh, on, on the tissue. It's not enough. The footprint is too, too small 
And this is why you need to repeat the treatment multiple passes. Um, I would like to add uh, for this, for the question from Roshin, um, there is another, there is another advantage or another two advantages that I see from um, the treatment perspective and also from the, um, uh, the speed of the treatment. So from the treatment perspective with the non-insulated, uh, you will have coagulation throughout all the needle, which means there, no, there, no there is no blood during the treatment and it will coagulate the entire, uh, the, entire, um, uh, the entire needle, I mean, around the needle. So in this case, we will have no blood or zero blood during the treatment with the non-insulated. With the insulated, we will have a lot of, a lot of blood and more pain, even more pain. This is a, uh, more pain is because there is a, the, a lot of energy, the concentrate, at the tip of the needle. So there is a more pain, blood versus no blood and less pain. There is another, there is another important thing between insulated and uninsulated. It's the, um, uh, the insulated will be very slow compared to non-insulated because by definition, you will need to do uh, a three stocks which means you will need to you will need to uh, to do three times uh, the treatment in a full phase. Which means if we are doing a full phase, because you want to because with the insulated you want to reach all the depth, so you will need to do three times: one time deep, one time medium, and one time superficial. With the non-insulated, only one time. So which means for for example. If we want to do a full face and it will take us 300 pulses to do it in the same way with the non-insulated. So with the insulated, it will take us 900 pulses. So it will be 900 pulses versus 300 pulses with the non-insulated. So much more, much more traumatic to the skin and much more pulses you need to do and, and longer, longer treatment. So there are actually many advantages to the non-insulated versus the insulated needles. Okay, so uh, th th I see many questions. So what's the, uh, what's the order by which I see them? Can intensive treat ice peak scars? What about calloids? Well, that's, that's it. Challenging one, yeah, it can it can uh, treat ice peak scars, but um, you know it's it's the most difficult one to treat uh, among the the other the box scars and the rolling scars. However, I don't have enough um, I would say clinical experience with it, but yes, it, you can treat ice peak scars. Maybe you'll need to do some subcision in in combination with the intensive, but it's it's amenable and you you can do it. Uh, Calloids. No, I would not use it for calloids. Uh, actually, I don't have any, at this stage, any clinical proof for its use uh, for, for calloids. Calloids is a special case of, of uh, scars and it's difficult to treat. There are other approaches for the doctors to, to pursue this difficult uh, indication. So for the ice peak scars, yes, but for the calloids, I would not try because it would not not, it will not make any changes. Yeah. There is Other a, questions? Uh, there is another question here, Joseph. I want yes. to from Dr. Brocio, Brocioli. I, I, I hope I pronounce it right. Uh, so he asks, as heat treatment can be useful for fat treatment, may you consider an evolution of intensive to go deeper and treat fat. Can you repeat the first part? I didn't hear the first sentence that you... The first one is, as heat treatment can be useful for fat uh, treatment, may you consider an evolution of intensive to go deeper and treat fat? Yes, heat can, heat can cause, you know, uh, sh shrinkage of the, 
of the adipocytes. It's well-known phenomenon that, that we all see. And th there is a indirect, indirect uh, uh, effect on the adipocytes due to heat uh, injury that we all experienced during the treatments of radio frequencies technology in the past years. Uh, the contour is an ideal one since it incorporates the suction and the vacuum, et cetera, and so forth. And with, with respect to the intensive, yes, we are looking at, at this issue for deeper needles insertion, depth of penetration, but it might take a while uh, to, to do so. But yes, Andymed is looking at R&D for this possibility or next generation of needles. Um, another question from uh, Ru Rudy from Indonesia. How to use the intensive handpiece on skin? Push the intensive on the skin or not? Yeah, that's that's a, quite a good question. Yes. See, the, there is should be a nice interplay, I would say, ideal interplay between the pressure being inserted on, on the face or on the skin. So what I'm doing practically is examining the patient's skin flaccidity or the compliance of the skin by pushing with the fingers and, and by that see whether it's you know, flaccid or, or uh, loose skin versus more tight skin. So there is a correlation between younger population which in most cases the patient, the skin is quite tense versus the old patients or middle age that they lose collagen and elastin. And here you need to have the approach, which, which I call passive approach, where I put the handpiece just in, in contact. And I follow up after doing the pulse, I see, I follow the, the needles, whether they were self-inserted. If they are not, if there is a bounce back of the electrodes of the, of the, of the needles, I typically push it a little bit more and follow whether the, it improves. So you need to have, I would say not over, overdo it, but you need to have good contact with, with the skin. This is a, an important issue. You need to be perpendicular to the skin. You need to have some, some force to counter the, uh, the, the counter the forces that might reject the, the needles to come, come in, inside. And one of the things, uh, of course, we know that if you are not doing it in perpendicular, not all the 25 needles will go uh, simultaneously at the same rate at the same depth. So, you know, you need to, technique wise, you need to have good technique with the micro needling, uh, whether you're standing or sitting or depend on the position, but you need to, of course, to, you need to test the, the patient's skin level of elasticity or flaccidity and, um, and correct it as you go and do the treatment. Sometimes I stretch with free hand, I stretch the skin uh, if I need, because I don't want to, to lose. Sometimes if you push it to, to inside, you lose the vision to see where the needles been, where did they go if, if they were did any, any, anything while you did the pulse. So I hope I answer that. Okay, I'm not sure if you answer, if you answer this because it was uh, related to the ice pack and um, to the calories, but uh, there is a, another question. The last one is uh, uh, how about upper eyelid laxity? So, yeah, you can treat the upper eyelid laxity with using the FSR um, and and the and the intensive together. There is yeah, there, we have that protocol for you if you want. We can we can send it to you, but you can you can use it uh, in, with the iFine and the FSR as a combination, and also with the intensive with you know with the conservative settings. Uh, Rudy, uh, I see your question about, uh, I use the intensive, there is a blood on the face. Um, okay, yeah. there, there, are, there are two, two reasons for to, to see blood. First of all, if there is a, just a, <clears throat> a little bit of blood here and there, 
it's normal. If there is a lot of blood, usually you need to uh, increase the pulse width to have longer coagulation. This is one, this is one, uh, one reason um, can appear blood on the face during the intensive uh, treatment. There is another thing, but it's very rare to check to check the needle. How sharp are the needles? If there is no, you can you can take the needle out, all the needles out, and you can see if there if there are any bended needles at the edge or something like that. If there is something like that, for sure, naturally will be blood. But this is uh, not the reason. Usually, usually the reason you need to increase the parameters to have longer. Uh, coagulation, so lo so longer longer pulse width. This supposed to solve this supposed to solve um, this issue. And about about the pain, about the pain, it depends it depends which which uh, anesthetic cream you're using. So this is I Joseph. I think you can uh, elaborate about the the pain the painful of the intensive treatment. Yeah, as yeah, as you mentioned, yeah, we as per protocol, we recommend, of course, do topical anesthesia. EMLA might not be sufficient to block the the pain that has been associated with intensive. So we are using kind of uh, more strength kind of uh, compound um, to strengthen the, the the anesthesia effect. Uh, I've noticed that there is a correlation between the pain and the pulse duration. Uh, so pain issue is where typically where the pulse durations are above 110 milliseconds. Uh, and it's of course based of course on, on the depth of penetration as well, but you can control it um, you know, via communicating with the patient. There are also some areas that are typically more painful than the rest. And you know, and you know that there's some areas that are prone to more painful issues. Not the entire face is one unit of pain. Uh, so, um, so be aware of those and learn, especially in the bony areas. These these areas are quite susceptible to pain. Um, but take your time and with the patients and try to mitigate that uh, as as you as you do the treatments. Uh, maybe switch to the other side uh, and then go back to the first side if it's painful on, on the same area. So these are the technique I'm using. There is another um, <clears throat> question just popped up and um, can intensive be used? Okay. One second, another one jump. Can intensive be used to treat uh, eye bags? I think you answered it uh, before. Yes. Uh, what? One, one second. Sorry. What about what about double chin? There is a. It's a. It's a very often question asked by doctors. Yeah, double chin can be treated, and it depends on the severity. Of, of course, the submental area uh, is quite responsive. We know based on our clinical experience that it's very responsive. The shaper, the mini shaper knee shaper and combination with the intensive can be good uh, protocol to combine. And yes, we have a double chin issues can be treated. Again, it depends on the severity. Uh, whether if it's severe, I would not use, I would use different approaches that might be, but for contouring for you no know, relatively um, small double chin areas, as you saw my, one of the photos that I showed earlier, showed very nice resolution, combining the FSR with the intensive on the same area. Um, so yeah, it's a good, it's a good, um, good area to, to be treated, but not with one, not only with one hand piece, but I would say combination of the two. Um, we, we are back with uh, Rudy regarding the question before with the blood and the pain and the pain. So he's asking, so first of all, he's claiming that the needle, the needle not sharp. So if the Rudy, if the needles are not sharp, it's not normal, which means that you need to, you need to change the tip, the tip. 
the disposable tip uh, because the, the, the needle is supposed to be very sharp. And he is also claiming, but <clears throat> if I increase the parameter, more blood. Uh, so I have to down the parameters, then no blood anymore. Need the explanation. Yeah, it's it sounds it sounds opposite. So um, it's hard for me to to understand uh, why it's happened why it's happened like this. But uh, maybe Joseph can elaborate. Before that, Rudy, mm -hmm. will be glad Rudy, we will be glad uh, to take it uh, to take it offline to see if. Maybe you have a specific uh, problem with the machine. We will be glad to help you directly. If if you like that, we will uh, check that we will check deeply the, this case with you. You can send you can send uh, the you can send an email. You have the the address of my email here, and we can and we can take it offline and we can check exactly what is the cause for this uh, for these issues because it's not supposed to it's not supposed to happen like this okay okay no more questions uh, if anyone have more questions we will be glad um, to answer New message. So Rudy, I guess we will be in touch. Your experience. Okay, so if if uh, we have no no more questions um, from from my side, I would like to thank to thank you all again for for the effort and for the for the patient and big thanks to Joseph. Thank you everyone to join. Thank you. And see you see you next time. See you guys. <clears throat>